Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be making a blueberry currant natural soda using the homemade fermentation starter. So I'm not doing water kefir today, I'm doing the natural soda. This is going to be a great option for those who are unable to get a hold of kefir grains or not, are uncomfortable with having to deal with them and keeping them alive because they are a little bit more problematic than your uh, just your regular fermentation starter but your benefits are going to be pretty similar. Uh, the fermentation starter is based mostly on more of a yeast where your kefir grains are going to have more, they are a symbiotic relationship between bacteria and yeast, so they're probably pretty 50-50. Now I believe most of your ferments are gonna have a little bit of each in them, but this one is gonna be mostly a yeast-based ferment because of all the sugar and all that in there. And you're just basing it off sugar and fruit because despite what some people say yeast is available on everything any kind of fruit any kind of vegetable so that is what's helping to get it started now you could likely make this soda without adding any starter to it at all because that's pretty much how you get your starter going it's just sugar water and fruit and nothing more you don't have to do anything to get it going but the nice thing about the starter is that you can start with small batches at a time until you know you've got it good and bubbly and sometimes a starter depending on the fruit or or even the herb you use like ginger is another really good one especially if you, you have to leave the skins on though to get a good fermentation starter depending on what you're using like blueberries for example seem to take longer i noticed it did for me and several people commented on a video a while back saying that their blueberry one took them a long time some will be bubbly within two to three days some can take five to seven days but that way you've got something to gauge it off of you can watch it uh, and it's just a small amount and even if it never works it's just a little bit and you really wasted very little and you can start over so then once you have your fermentation starter and this is why i like to use it for making other kinds of fermented things because this is going to guarantee I don't have a failed batch so then when I go to make bigger batches of like kimchi or fermented fruits I just put in a little bit of my starter and I'm guaranteed it's going to ferment and I don't have to worry about it or I can use it when I'm fermenting eggs and also especially with eggs I want to guarantee it's going to ferment and not spoil on me and so having the starter is good though many ferments can be done without using a starter at all it's just that little extra insurance that costs nothing but a little bit of the time and patience waiting for the starter to be ready so anyway on to the soda right here all these blueberries came off of our six shrubs that are in pots on our deck just today alone. Mr. Rain picked all these. And this is the most I've ever seen come off our shrubs in one day, ever, in the, in the several years we've had our blueberries. And so they're doing really good this year. And usually, you know, up to two pints a day would be our max. Um, and then we'd end up with maybe about three gallons at the by the end of the picking uh throughout the season because yeah is anyone who has blueberries knows they don't come in all at once they're not ripe all at once you have to keep picking them for over a period of a couple of months until they're they're finally all ripe but anyway this is really good but i'm not going to be using all these today i'm going to be using one pint of the blueberries and the little bit of currants that i picked off of our brand new currant bushes that i just bought uh today well i didn't just buy we've had them for a few weeks but they're um they were they had berries on them when we got them but they were green and now they're getting ripe there's still several more out there but we won't get tons they're just brand new baby plants okay so all i'm gonna do is take one of my pints of blueberries i just rinsed them a little bit just to kind of get some of the dirt and bugs off of there but i don't care about the stems they're not going to hurt you I, I if there's little bits of stems in there and, and blossoms on there i don't care i just leave them they're all good for you and then i'll go ahead and pour in the little bit of currants I have off there. I'm going to fill this up. So I got about six cups of water in here, or six cups total. So I'll probably have about four cups of water. Let's see, let's get that up to the six, or at least the five. We'll do five. I'm going to do a total of a half cup of sugar. In fact, oops, let's do 
quarter cup of organic cane sugar and then let's and then a quarter cup of coconut sugar i don't sometimes i don't like to use all coconut sugar because it can vary the flavor so much of your fruit but having a little bit in there is really good because it's very high in minerals your coconut sugar okay so now i'm just going to turn this on Okay, now I'm gonna add the fermentation starter. And what you need to have is at least a quarter cup per one quart of whatever it is that you're fermenting. So I'm gonna need at least a half cup in here. So let's just pour out half the liquid. Or actually that's probably a whole cup. Half the liquid would be a whole cup. And I'm just gonna gently process this just a little bit more to blend that in there. You can see it getting very fizzy. Okay, just enough to, to uh, stir it through there. And I should have almost two quarts here. Look at that. How fizzy that is. Oh my goodness, it smells good. And then I'm going to fill up my quart jars. All right, then the next thing you want to do is put on some type of canning lid, whether it be a metal lid or your tatler lid, like I have here on my fermentation starter, and then put your bands on, not too tight. I would say loosen it up just a little bit, put it on there and then loosen it up just a little bit so that will help the gases to escape. And then you're gonna leave this out, out, on your counter or even on top of your fridge. But whatever you do, I recommend you keep it someplace where you can see it daily because you're gonna need to let it ferment for three days. Now, right now it's already fizzy because of the blending process and from the fermentation starter, but you're gonna need it to give it time for the whole thing to ferment. And as far as the fruit in there, you can choose to strain it out using one of these mesh strainers like this and a piece of cloth if you don't like it to be more like a smoothie. For me, I like, if I'm going to do this, I might as well leave all the fruit in there because there's so many benefits, health benefits that are in those skins and that pulp and you're getting some fiber and all that great stuff by leaving the fruit in there. But if you're just wanting a nice kind of clean, uh, clear type soda, then I recommend you go ahead and strain it out with like some cheese, a cheesecloth is good, but you can just use a plain piece of clean cotton cloth and lay it over that and have it over like a measuring cup, a glass measuring cup, and then, then you can put it in there and that would be when you would want to add your fermentation starters after you strain out all the fruit. But I'm leaving it in for all that great, great health benefits of the whole fruit and I just think it's really good. Now in three days this should be ready and then what I'll do, instead of having to come back and remember to shoot another video uh, segment on this, I'm going to go ahead and insert a picture of the finished product right here. And there you have it. It's just a super easy process. You can use any fruit that you want to. It's one of the easiest ways you can make a natural soda that doesn't take as long as certain other ways like maybe kombucha or and also doesn't you know where you don't have to bother dealing with the you know the kefir grains and things like that now as far as this all i have to do is top it off with my filtered rainwater and add a little bit more sugar let it sit for the rest of the day to get good and bubbly again and making sure that sugar is all blended in there and then i'm just going to stick it back in the fridge until i'm ready to use it again and that's just a really simple way to make a natural soda one more thing I do want to stress is that making sure that you're using a good water. A city tap water, even if it's unfluoridated, is still going to have chlorine in it. So if you, you're having to use your city tap water, I recommend at least getting the chlorine out because chlorine is easy to get out of water and it, if it's in there, it can for, affect the ferment. It can kill off the bacteria and the yeast and you don't want that to happen or at least slow down the process considerably. Now one thing I used to do before we had our rainwater collection and then started filtering the rainwater to use for things like this or just consumption period, we don't, we don't drink the city water at all, is I used to take jugs of water like this and just leave the, take the cork off, 
put a, just a piece of cloth over it to keep uh, dust and bugs and whatever from falling in there and then let it sit for a couple of days and it probably doesn't even take that long but I would let it sit for up to three days just to make sure all the chlorine especially since it's such a small opening got evaporated out because chlorine will evaporate out but you can also do a faster method by boiling it I don't remember the length of time I'll try to remember to look that up and put it right here the length of time you got to boil it hope you enjoyed this video on how to make your own homemade natural soda out of whatever fruits you have on hand thanks for watching Take care and God bless.